It's your girl coming live, loud, and in color. So listen here. This is what we're going to do today. I'm going to get right down to the nitty gritty about what we're going to do. I was sitting there. I was laying on the couch and I was watching the Olympics and I was saying to myself, am I going to cook today? Now nah, I ain't going to cook today. And then it hit me. You got some leftover beef in there because y'all remember I made that uh, stewed beef the other day. And I had some of that beef left. So... What your girl decided to do is I'm going to make a barbecue pulled beef. Normally I make barbecue pulled pork, but today I'm going to make a barbecue pulled beef. And guess what I have? I got a prize for y'all, something y'all ain't seen in a minute. Your girl been slipping, but I got something for y'all. Guess what I pulled down today? Dun, 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 dun. There it is. Y'all know my pressure cooker. Holla. I got my beef in here, okay? And it's all it's a big old piece of beef. And I just put it down in this pressure cooker. Because the pressure cooker, once I cook it, it's going to make it nice and tender and all that kind of good stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm about to season it up. Now, one thing I do with any of my pulled barbecue sauces or whatever, I generally make a uh, vinegar base. So first thing I'm pouring in here is I always start out with a little bit of vinegar. And I pour the vinegar over the meat and I put it down in the bottom of the pan. Okay. Then we're going to go with all our spices. The meat is frozen, but I'm putting it in a pressure cooker. So it really doesn't matter that it's frozen. I'm going to uh, put a little bit of meat tenderizer just to help tender it tenderize it a little bit because it is beef and it is frozen although when you cook beef frozen it turns out really really good though it really does when you cook any meat frozen and down in the pressure cooker it turns out really good uh sprinkle a little teeny bit of salt i'm gonna put a little garlic pepper in there i'm sorry not garlic pepper a little garlic powder put a bit a little bit of garlic powder down in there a little bit of onion powder and these are powders not salts because it is a difference it's a difference when you're using garlic salt onion salt I'm not using salts I'm using powders so I have onion powder I have garlic powder and um, the only salt that I did use is I used a little bit of meat tenderizer that has very a uh, little bit of salt in it hey Monday baby and I did put a little bit of accent in there because accent wakes up the flavor. I don't use a lot of accent because accent is not good for you from my understanding. But hell, what is good for you? Hey, Q, baby. So anyway, I got my, my meat in my pressure cooker. Y'all know, see way up there in the sky? Up high? Look there up in the corner. That's where I had to get it from. But y'all know that tall old jazz had to get that down for me. So listen, it's been a lot of good stuff been going on. I've been getting a lot of good feedback and a lot of stuff from people contacting me in my inbox, which I always appreciate that. I always appreciate that different things people want me to touch on, honey, because see, I don't mind touching on anything because uh, y'all know how I am. Whatever comes up, comes out. You know how we do, Q. Hey, Faye, baby. How are you, honey? Um, y'all know how, you know how I do, Q. Whatever comes up out, you know, you a brown. You know what I'm talking about. You know how we comes up out of our mouth with any old thing. So anyway, y'all, I got this beef down here in this pot. I did put a little bit of water in it because it's frozen and I'm putting it in the, in the pressure cooker. And I want my beef to be tender. And if y'all just joining me, I'm doing a barbecue beef. Pull barbecue beef. Now y'all see, it's got all the seasons and stuff on the top. But remember, those are powders. Those are not salts. It's a difference. Um, all right, and then I sure will, baby. I sure will. No wonder I ain't heard from you because you've been cooking. Now, look, y'all. I'm putting a little bit of red hot pepper flakes down in there. I am. I sure am. And I'm going to tell y'all why I do that. Because anything, anything that you cook that's barbecue, you always need a little kick to it, okay? And that little red pepper flakes will give it a kick. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna throw my pressure cooker on here. 
I'm going to put my pressure cooker on. Really, realistically, I can turn this pressure cooker on this frozen beef for 25 minutes because this pressure cooker ain't no joke. And it'll be good. It'll be nice and tender. But because I want it to be so tender, 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 where well, I ain't got to do no cook uh, cutting, I can just pull the beef and make my barbecue beef. I'm going to cook it for about 45 minutes or so. I'm only giving y'all a time because I got to set a timer on this pressure cooker. Because y'all know I told y'all I don't measure nothing. And I don't time nothing. But the only reason why I'm telling you about the time is just in case there's somebody out there that has one of these pressure cookers. And they not real sure how, you know, to work. Because I had to really, it was trial and error for me. Because I didn't know. How this thing was going to work out. Hang on, y'all. Let me sit y'all up here on this stove for a minute. Yeah, girl. Oh, you know what? That reminds me. Let me throw a little bit of black pepper in here, too. I'm not big on black pepper. I'm really not. But there are some things that you cook that you can use a little black pepper in. And whenever I do my barbecues with a little bit of kick like this, I usually put a little bit of black pepper or a little bit of cayenne pepper in it. So I'm going to put a little bit of black pepper in it. And to all of my people out there that's always talking about me and my pork, I ain't making pork today, y'all. I'm making beef. So I'm going to put this lid on here. I'm going to close this up. I'm going to plug it up. And we're going to set the timer on this bad boy. Oh, shit. Wait a minute, y'all. Got to set this to airtight. Uh, hit the pressure cook button and then I'm going to set it on how many minutes that I want it to go on. I don't know why this thing is doing this. Oh, there it is. Because usually you can hold the button and it'll just keep going as long as you want it to. So anyway, y'all, since I didn't discovered that now I can do live and at the end of my live video, the only thing I got to do is hit download. Facebook must have heard me complaining. And talking about the fact that it don't make no sense. That it's no way to download your live videos. They must have heard me complaining, honey. So, I noticed last night. Because I had made a video. The video was 22 minutes long. And at the end of the damn video, somehow or another, me messing around, I deleted the video. Oh, and I want y'all to know, that spaghetti I made last night, gone. Gone. Gone, gone. Let me show y'all the results of that spaghetti. See that? See that roasting pan? It's got dishwater in it. That was a roasting pan filled with spaghetti last night. Jasmine just got the last bit of it, and she was quite pissed because that was the first time she had got any of it. She didn't even get any last night. So between them boys, Sands, and the boys' friends, they tore that shit up. So anyway, I was getting a lot of little feedback about different things inside of my, uh, my inbox. And people just telling me different things they wanted me to cook and different things they wanted me to touch bases on and everything. And somebody asked me today, what was my take on that girl? What her name is? Y'all know I'm bad with names. What's the young lady's name that got killed up there in Randallstown on the standoff? The little pretty light-skinned girl. What her name was? Corinne, I believe it is. Somebody asked me what was my thoughts about that. Well, let me say this. Here's what my thoughts are about that. Nobody should die at any time underneath of the police supervision. Now, there's been a lot of mixed controversy about that. People saying one thing after the other, after the other, and she was wrong, and this, that, and the other. From the videos that I saw, she didn't seem to be threatening in any type of way. So some subjects, because they're a little bit sticky, I'm, a, I'm the type of person like this. If it's something I know about, I'll speak on it. If I don't know about it, I'm not going to speak on it. So to those of you who inbox me and want to know my opinion about it, Corinne Gaines. Okay, yeah, Bondi, I knew you was at the vigil. Let me say this. I don't know enough about what happened. I don't know, so I'm going to say this. Let me do a little bit more research. Let me look at a little bit more videos and let me see because I really don't have an opinion one way or the other other than the fact that she shouldn't have died under the hands of police. Simple. From the video that I did see, I didn't see anything threatening about her manner in any kind of shape, form, or fashion that would dictate her being dead late at the end of that standoff. So from what I did see, 
I didn't see anything that would constitute why her family was having a candlelight vigil last night. But as far as to get down into the meat, meat and potatoes about this, that, or the other, I can't do it because I don't know enough about it other than the fact that what I saw wasn't enough to constitute, in my opinion, from what I saw, it wasn't enough to constitute her being dead today. Oh, really, Mondi? Oh, wow. That's awful. See, so I'm going to have to talk to Mondi on the sidebar and kind of get more about what's going on. I don't have no opinion about whether she was right or wrong or whatever. All I can say is she had no business dying at the hands of the police from what I saw. I saw nothing. So that's my take on that. And that's all I'm going to say on that. Because like I said, I don't speak on anything that I have no real knowledge of. If I'm speaking about something on here, you can best believe because I have firsthand knowledge and I know what I'm talking about and I'm speaking from facts, not from assumptions. I don't give my opinion on anything unless I know what I'm talking about. So there you have it on that. Uh, Mondi, a lot of people told me that they've been checking you out and looking at your video since I posted about you last night. Um... And they were saying that they were going to try to step up and support you a little bit more. So I was getting a lot of feedback about that. Uh, what else was I getting feedback about? So people text me about all kinds of things. Um, they, from what I, from a couple of people were saying too, they like the fact that I don't have no whole bunch of drama and this, that, and the other on my page or whatever. Well, because I'm not going to stand for that. You know, we all adults. It ain't got to be. I ain't no Facebook bully. I ain't no person that's going to stand up there and say a damn thing about you or to you over Facebook that I wouldn't say to you in your face. So therefore, a lot of times when you have people that create these situations that become hostile and it become a lot of drama is because people get bold and they say things that they wouldn't say to you in your face. OK, so that's where the drama comes in. So for the most part, I'm keeping it real. Like I told you all from real talk from my kitchen to yours or wherever you are. I get down like how I always do. I'm not acting any different than I would act as if one of my girlfriends was standing here in the kitchen and we was having a conversation and I was cooking. I'm not, I'm not about all that extra stuff. And I ain't going to allow nobody to be attacked or anything on my page while I'm sitting here. We all just keeping it real and talking about, you know, general stuff and food and all that kind of stuff. But child, why ain't nobody told me school was about to start back that quick? See, y'all see me? I jumped from one subject to another. So you can't hold me to one subject too long because I'm gone from one subject to the other at the blink of an eye. So I ain't even know school starts on the 16th. Oh, Lord, he had a mercy. I ain't ready. I ain't ready, y'all. But I do thank God that I don't have three children in school anymore. Well, I got two boys going to college, but I only got one in high school that I have to worry about. So, oh, Jasmine said that don't count. So, I am thankful that I don't have three boys, that I, three children anymore that I have to take care of and put through high school and foot the bill. And it is a blessing that I have sons who work so that if I need help with something for their sister, they can help their mommy out. You know, that's what it's all about. Helping out and everything. It's tough. You know, if you're a single parent, and God bless you to you women who are not single parents. God bless you to you women out there who have men that support you and support your children or their children or whatever. You know, you're, you're blessed. Keep in mind, I had all three of my children in wedlock. I had no idea that anybody couldn't have told me this 15 years ago. Nobody could told me that I would be a single parent. I always said that if Wendell and I split up, that I knew he would provide for his children and he would be there for the children and he would take care of the children. I had no idea, no idea whatsoever that 15 years later I'm, I'm here and I've been taking care of my children by myself. But you know what? I don't apologize. I don't regret it. And anything that I do for my children, I do it a hundred times over. You know why? Because I chose life for them. They didn't choose life for themselves. So it's my job as a parent with or without their father. I'm supposed to provide for them because I made the choice to give them life. Because I did have a choice. It was my body and it was my choice. And I chose to be a mother and I chose to bring them here. So with or without their father, it is my responsibility as a mother to see to it that my children have whatever it is that they need. That's just my take on it. Now, that's how I feel about that. I'm looking at these dogs in here on my bed. What the hell are they doing? Come in here, Buster and Red. Get off of mommy's bed. Because they chewing my damn comforter up. Come on, Buster. Red. Red. Come on, Red. Jasmine, come get Red out my bedroom. 
Excuse me, y'all, because he's in there chewing my damn comforter up on my bed and piss me off. See that? See what I mean? Every day I always got to argue or fuss about something, be it Jasmine or the damn dogs. Oh, now she tells me he wasn't chewing the comfort. He was chewing plastic. Hi, Sherry Boo Boo. How are you? So, anywho, like I said, for those of y'all just catching me, I um, am cooking in the pressure cooker. I got the pressure cooker going. Let me turn it around so you can see. I got the pressure cooker going. It is heating up. With this pressure cooker, it heats up to a certain temperature. Once it heats up to that temperature, then the countdown will come on for the pressure cooking to actually start. And then it seals it in. And once it seals it in, of course, you can't open it up. I like this new style digitized uh, pressure cooker because it ain't like the ones Big Mom and them had back in the day where if you took the top off and it was too soon and the pressure hadn't already re always released, it'd bust your head to the white meat because I was scared to death of those. So um, I'm real happy to have this one. Um, I don't have to worry about it. Uh, so something else that I had tiptoed around and I start crossing over into which y'all didn't know anything about this, but I'm going to share with y'all right now. I have been making my own dog food. I have. I tell you, I'm always crossing over into something. I pretty much ain't no whole lot to it. So that's what I'm doing right now is I'm cooking my dog food for my dogs. Dogs can have brown rice. They can have pretty much all the vegetables except for broccoli and cauliflower because broccoli and cauliflower gives them gas. Corn is not good for their digestive system, but rice is good for them. Um, chicken, beef, uh, turkey, those types of things are good um, for dogs. So I've been kind of crossing over and making my own dog food too. And they can have things like carrots and peas. And so that's what I'm doing right now. Right now I'm making the rice and everything and getting stuff started. I'm making a pot of dog food. Why? Because, first of all, dog food is too damn expensive. And my man decided that he wanted to go and get two goddamn dogs at one time instead of one. So everything is so expensive, not to mention when you look up the ingredients and things in some of these dog foods, it's not good at all. It's not good. It's really, really, really not good. So I didn't venture over into making dog food, honey. But um, I went online and I pretty much knew what kind well I'm going to be honest with you back in the day when I had dogs whatever the hell we ate our dogs ate if I ate shrimp and steak that dog I had tiny boo he ate shrimp and steak if I had bacon and eggs tiny boo had bacon and eggs if I had hot dogs and beans tiny boo had hot dogs and beans that was how I did things back in the day but I ain't trying to do that now I'm trying to be a little bit better because I'm a little bit wiser and a little bit smarter about how you're supposed to care for your pets. Not to mention, people are crazy where pets are concerned. And these laws and things, and when you take the dogs for their shots and you take them to the vets, it's like they be all on you just like Child Protective Services about these pets. So, um, I be kind of trying to make sure I do the right thing when my dogs are concerned. So I did my little studying and my little investigating and so I'm making them some rice and I've got some chicken that I'm going to cut up without the skin and I don't put any salt in it whatsoever and I got some fresh carrots and some uh, peas and some green beans and I'm going to throw that up in there and mix it up for my dogs, let it cool and then I'm going to feed them that, that dog food so I'm branching over and everything. Uh, Okay, yeah. All right, Anna and Mondi, y'all. So y'all both on the same page with me with the chicken and the rice. Cool. Because, you know, it took me a minute. I've been doing this for a minute, but I ain't really said too much about it because I wanted to make sure I was doing the right thing. But, yep, that's... Who, the dog is on allergy meds? No. Hey, Nick. Hey, Carl. No, Mondi, the dog is on allergy meds from the dog food. You know, and that I tried. Remember we was talking about what dog food I should get for the dogs? The Purina Puppy Child, first of all, when we got them from 
the vet, well, not the vet, from the rescue shelter, we were giving them science diet because that's what they gave us. Science diet is too damn expensive. And speaking to the people in the pet store, they were like, it's really not all that great of a dog food. And that was all I needed to hear because it was too expensive. So then I did get the Purina Puppy Child, and they did real good with that. But then Purina Puppy Child, I looked at Old Roy. Old Roy is a Walmart brand of pretty much Purina Puppy Child. I looked, and the dogs weren't eating it too well. Now, before, the dogs were eating it just fine, but they were not eating that too well at all. So then I started looking at it and up looking at it, and it was a little of what dog foods were bad for dogs baby i want you to know that old roy was one of the top 10 of the worst dog foods for the dogs everything that was in there that they say the dog shouldn't have is what's inside of old roy so then the dogs ended up started choking on the old roy or something so i said damn i don't want to do that hey wanda don't worry baby you're not that late this is what i did i had that big thing of beef and i put that in my pressure cooker let me show you i pulled the pressure cooker back out Put it in the pressure cooker and I'm making some I'm making some barbecue pulled beef. Normally I make barbecue pulled pork, but today I'm making barbecue pulled beef. So that's what I'm doing with that. I seasoned that up and put it in there. We didn't touch on a couple of different things. Um Oh yeah, Chardonnay don't like science dying, huh? Okay, Monty, you got a small dog. See, you and Annette got small dogs. I got labs, and these labs are big. They're only four months old, and one of them is almost about 40 pounds. And the other one, I'm not really sure. I guess Buster's probably about maybe 30 pounds. Not even. He's a little bit smaller than Red. Red is uh, the bigger one, and he's like almost 40 pounds. But the vet said that Red is going to get their lab, so they're going to get big. And the vet said that they're going to get up to about 65, 75 pounds. So these are pretty big dogs, and they eat pretty healthy. Pretty healthy portions. Um, but yeah, the, the Jasmine, why did you go in there and jump on my bed like that? Get the dogs out my room and get off of my bed. Um, so yeah, that's what I kind of been venturing over into fixing their dog food because they, they just weren't eating that old Roy and it was concerning me because I don't want them to get sick. You know, that's the last thing I want because a damn vet bill, honey, is just expensive as a bill for a person. My goodness. So shut my door, please. When they come out. Thank you. Um, Uh -huh. She looked forward to her wet food. And then I was keeping an eye on, of course, their little stool and everything because I wanted to make sure, which I don't have to worry about it. They don't. Every now and again, what I've had to do is I've really had to learn how the dog's behaviors are. For the most part, for them being dogs from the vet, from the rescue shelter, they really, really did pretty good with far as training them and everything because immediately when they came home, they had to go in crates. Because after that other dog that we had from the rescue shelter, that bitch was retarded. Yes. That Sasha that I had from the rescue shelter, she was retarded. She was just as simple as she wanted to be, baby. And after her, I told Sands if he ever got any other dogs, he had to get crates first. So we got the crates and brought them home. And they're pretty good with the crates. And people were telling me, don't feed them in the crate because you don't want them starting to go to the bathroom in there. Because then they won't sleep in there because they don't eat. They don't sleep when they eat shit or whatever. So anyway, they've been pretty good. But they'll go to my back patio door, especially that little one, Buster. He'll go to the back patio door and let me know when he's got to go to the bathroom. Let me show y'all these two little rascals. Look at them. Y'all see them? The big one looking at you is red and the other one is small. This one walking right here is Buster. Say hi, Buster. Say hello. Say my name is Buster. And this is my big brother, Red. That's Red. And that's Buster. Say hello. This little one, Buster, that's Jasmine's baby. Jasmine got this one right here rotten to the core. Yes, sir. He is rotten. That's Jasmine's baby right there. She got him rotten to the core. So, um, yeah, that's what it is, y'all. Listen here. I can smell that beef coming through my pressure cooker already, baby. It's smelling some kind of good. Oh, honey. First of all, I don't know what happened. Something happened somewhere. I'm going to have to call the manufacturer. Uh-huh. Back on that. My pressure cooker. I want y'all to see what I'm talking about. In the top of here, if you can, you can see the steam coming up. That's not supposed to be happening. It's supposed to be airtight. It was a little piece that was down here in the top. I don't know what happened to that piece. 
so the air is coming out of there and it's still it's don't get me wrong it still cooks good but the air is coming out of there so what I have to do is put a rag over top to seal that that steam down in there but you know I'm getting ready to contact the manufacturer don't you Annette Annette do you hear me sis you know I'm about to contact that manufacturer don't you and ask them what the hell is the goings on and where the hell can I get that piece or they need to replace me a whole new pressure cooker because that piece is missing and it ain't doing what it's supposed to do um but yeah thank y'all my babies are cute they cute as a button I love them to death I love them to death so anywho we are all done in the kitchen for you know it and that you know how I do girl come on now listen I'm getting ready to get off of here for now I'm getting ready to again if you're coming in late I'm making some barbecue pulled beef what's going with it I don't know baby I might make a little side salad and throw them bread boys on some potato rolls I ain't even really sure but anywho this is your girl I am signing out just for a few but I'll be back from my kitchen to yours or wherever you may be. Ah!